So today I'm doing a video all about Shepra perfumes, explaining what Shepra means and taking you through the different types of Shepra perfumes. Perfume is kind of a world where it isn't always obvious what all these different buzzwords mean and I used to be quite confused by Shepra. I was told that I liked Shepra perfumes um, you know, when I was younger and then would try Shepra ones and didn't like them and I found it quite confusing. So hopefully this video will help um, clear that up for you guys if anyone's not 100% sure. If you are new here then hello and welcome, we are all about perfumes here. I have hundreds and hundreds of other videos all about types of perfumes, perfume ranges from different brands, hopefully lots of things that are helpful for explaining and of course I have my perfume wheel video which explains the different fragrance families. Uh, I'll leave that link down below. I guess that doesn't mention Shepra and there were some questions from that like where's Shepra so hopefully this will help with that. If you aren't new here, if you're a regular and you haven't subscribed yet, then do hit the subscribe button and show your support. And all the perfumes I mentioned I'll link down below um, for you can get them in the US and UK. So Shepra is spelt C-H-Y-P-R-E, um, but it's pronounced like sheep, you know, bah, sheep, <laughs> like Shepra. And to be honest, it's a little bit of a confusing and in my opinion, potentially unnecessary type of perfume. I feel like the fragrance wheel kind of covers things, the fragrance families, and this does add a new element of confusion. I think the way to think of it is like a layer on top of the fragrance wheel. So the fragrance wheel, if you haven't seen my video, is like you've got woody ones, you've got aromatic, you've got green, fresh and citrus ones, uh, fruity, and you've got floral uh, and oriental. Um, so every perfume fits in one of those groups. Shepra is like you could overlay that on top of that to a large extent. So Shepra is actually the French word for Cyprus island in the Mediterranean. Um, so it doesn't mean the Cyprus tree, um, which is a common perfume note like Cyprus from the tree, but it's nothing to do with that. And I think the idea is that it probably originated from, I don't know, you know, Roman, Greek times. Of course, it is very like centered around the Mediterranean. If you've ever been there, there is a smell in the air with all different herbs and green things and flowers. Uh, and of course, the, the smell of the sea. And I know, you know, perfume was obviously a thing back then. So I think perhaps it has origins from that. And Cyprus in the Greek myths is where Aphrodite is born, who's the goddess of love. So that kind of fits with perfume. And a lot of the type of aromatic like flowers and plants that go in the cheaper perfumes do grow in Cyprus and that type of climate so it's so basically it's a bit of a not exactly clear and definitely not self-explanatory name so there's a particular ingredients notes in a, t a perfume that make it a cheaper perfume but I think over time that definition does flex and there are some that don't strictly have all of them in so the idea is that it would have a top note, so like the first sort of fresh note um, tends to be the lightest note in a perfume, with bergamot, or bergamot, I can never pronounce that right. That kind of, if you've ever smelled Earl Grey tea, that has a lot of bergamot in, That's it's that type of smell. So it's not necessarily super, super like a lemon. Um, it's a slightly aromatic lemon, I'd say bergamot. Um, but it doesn't have to be bergamot, it could just be a citrus top note. And then a heart, um, heart note, the sort of middle note, which is floral. I think uh, laburnum was, you know, sort of 18th century was like the true definition of Shepra, but now it's laburnum is hardly ever used in perfumes, but similar flowers. And then the base note would have a mossy or, you know, in the past more animalistic, you know, we don't really use animal products really in perfume anymore. Um, so mossy like oak moss base. And if you are someone that, you know, is into perfume, you'll probably recognize that a lot of perfumes have a similar um, composition to that with either, like a, a woody deep base, a floral middle, and then a, a, a fresh citrusy top note. So I think even though a perfume doesn't have to have those three exact notes in, um, or I guess that would be like the perfect Shepra, you know, that's just one smell, but things that are along those veins are Shepra. And so within the Shepra area, it's not a fragrance family, 
um, concept, I guess, you have different types of Shepra which have emphasis on different areas and are mixed with different things. And that's where I started really getting confused because if you like one type of Shepra, it doesn't mean that you like all the others. Um, one thing to also note is that nowadays a lot of Shepra, like new release Shepras, have patchouli in, sort of in the base, in the heart. Patchouli is used in so many perfumes, I know some people love it or hate it, and I don't think it was used that much in fragrances, you know, in France, like in the sort of, you know, um, olden times or whatever, but of course it is now, so I think now, sort of pop culture, that has become a signature part of Shepra. Okay, so within the Shepra world, we have six different types of Shepra. So I think probably the most sort of common is the floral Shepra. And I think a really good example of that is Coco Mademoiselle from Chanel. Um, which I used to have, I was told it was Shepra, and I thought, right, I like Shepra perfumes. Um, that of course has a sort of orangey top note, the rosy jasmine heart, and then it has a slightly woody base, um, but the floral middle is the dominant note, it's a very rosy perfume. Some quite good ones which are a very typical floral Shepra and actually are quite good substitutes for Coco Mademoiselle is Molten Brown have their Jasmine Sun Lily. I find that if you love Coco Mademoiselle but you don't want to buy like all the body products because they are very expensive from Chanel, the Molten Brown Jasmine Sun Lily, if you use all that it's going to work really well with your Coco Mademoiselle. I say that because I was considering getting that for mum because it would go really well with her Coco Mademoiselle. And then also Floral Street, um, that British brand sold at Sephora in America, uh, vegan cruelty free, I did a video on them. They have one called Shepra Sublime, which is a bit heavier than Coco Mademoiselle and l less of the orange. It's a bit more, got more of the woody oak moss with the floral notes but that's a very true Shepra and I liked Coco Mademoiselle but I don't really like that it's too much towards the woody or a mossy end for me so that's the floral one potentially like that's probably the easiest to recognize you can get leather um Shepra probably uh, the best example of this is the I'm gonna pronounce this wrong but Bottega Veneta perfume like their signature one it's just called but the Tigger Veneta, um, I know they have other ones. That is a very heavy, strong, long-lasting leather Shepra. People that like leather perfumes sometimes are um, find it difficult because a lot of leather perfumes are very masculine. Even unisex ones tend to have a, loads of wood in or like a smoky vibe or something, and it people. I would get people coming into the perfume shop where I used to work saying they wanted leather and then I'd give them these leather ones and they'd say no that's too masculine. Um, probably what they like is a leather Shepra. So even though it's leather it's got these floral, it's got the woody mossy undertone and it has a bit of a fresh star as well on the top note. So um, I know that that perfume is very successful for people that like that type of perfume, it, it's, and it's a good, strong, long-lasting perfume. You can then get green Shepras, and I think the best example of this is Chanel 19. Uh, I hate this perfume. This obviously is um, quite old, it's been around for quite, quite a while, so it's quite a true Shepra, a green Shepra. It has a real earthy, woody base, it has a bit of leather in, uh, vetiver, and it has the top note of the bergamot, and in, like really very fresh green, but underneath is all this mossiness, which I pay. And then the middle, it has Lily of the Valley, which I hate, has Rose in. And so it is a very classic Shepra perfume. It's easy to think, you know, the green liquid, oh, that's just green. It's it's a green Shepra, so it's not like a sort of light fresh grass. It's like a oak moss smell. So you can then get more like fresher, where the citrus is the star of the show, Shepras. Arancia de Capri on my wish list is a good example of that from Aqua de Palma. This is their orange one. So of course, Aqua de Palma, Mediterranean Italian brand. The main note is this lovely warm orange. I love the smell of this perfume. I should have asked for it for Christmas. But it has um, cardamom in, it has these other notes underneath, which make it nicely unisex and add 
give it a nod towards the sheeper it's not like a true perfect sheeper but it's of that vein and you know it's based on Arantia which is basically near Cyprus kind of and then one that is hard to place is um wonderful Miss Dior from Dior one of my favorite scents that's a to Chypre. It's kind of like Coco Mamazelle in that it has all the rose, but it also has a lot of fresh notes in, especially the reformulated version that we have now, not the one from like 15 years ago, and certainly not the original, original Misty Art from like the 50s. But basically you've got the orange at the top, you've got the floral rose in the middle, and then in the base, rather than the mossy note, you've got patchouli, which is kind of replaced oak moss as the base of most modern perfumes. So I'd say Miss Dior is probably the best example of a modern patchouli perfume, that and Coco Mademoiselle. You can get some woody ones. Um, Vengeance Extreme from Juliet Has a Gun is a woody sheeper, quite strong, heavy. I'm, I'm not personally that keen on it. And then lastly, Fruity Sheeper. And guess which one that is? It's my favorite, <laughs> Jimmy Choo. Um, Jimmy Choo by Jimmy Choo, Eau de Parfum. This is a Sheepra. Again, this is why it confused me because people are like, oh, you like Sheepra. Um, this has pear as the top note, fruity pear, but it has that patchouli base. It has orchid as its middle floral note, and it does have the orange in actually a top note, but I get pear. I don't really get much orange. But yeah, I always just get pear. Um, it does have some toffee in, which adds a sweetness, but it's not sickly sweet. It's a fruity perfume. It smells like pear and orange and patchouli. It's amazing. I love it. And I guess this is probably the most modern of all the sheepers. Like if you took this to a traditional perfumer, it, they would be like, oh no, that's not sheep. Ooh, that's modern rubbish, fruity, go away. Um, but this is the way cheaper is going for sure. So yeah, so I hope you found that video helpful guys to try and explain the world of Shepra. Uh, let me know what your favorite ones are down below in the comments. Um, do you like any of the ones I've mentioned? What else would you add? Uh, but that's it. So thanks so much for watching as always, and I will see you in the next video.